Hello everyone, I'm Sierra. And I'm Ashley. And this is your Weekly Weekly Dose Dose of Wicked. Welcome to your weekly dose of Wicked. That was a lot. I know, it was. It was good. Well, I was listening to last week's episode and I sound a little grumpy. So I was trying to bring full energy this week. Okay. Well, I appreciate that. You did sound grumpy last week. I was grumpy last week. Remember, it was a bad week. So this week, much better week. Is it? No, but we're pretending it is. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) So it's fine. What do we got going on in the world of Weekly Dose of Wicked? Not a, not a lot going on. Um, Monday we'll have a bonus episode on the Patreon. If you guys want to check that out, then you should go to www.patreon.com forward slash weekly dose of wicked, where you can sign up for one of the Patreon tiers and you can become a honorary pepperoni patroni. Woohoo! So do it, do it now. Uh, other announcement we can probably announce. Um, the Etsy shop. That's going to be shutting down soon. We've uh, unanimously, as in Ashley and I, agreed that um, it's not really super beneficial and uh, it costs us money and we don't get a lot of orders off of it. So if you guys want something off the Etsy, go ahead and grab it while you can before. I don't know why I said can like that. Well, you can. Go ahead and grab it while you can. That's my Yankee coming out. That was weird. Go ahead and grab it while it's available. Because, yeah, I mean, we did that so that, you know, people could buy our merch, which is great. Fabulous. We've definitely got some orders off it. But we don't actually make any money off of it, and we have to pay for it every month. So we just feel like um, from a business aspect, it's better to go ahead and shut her down. Yeah, and we haven't gotten any orders in a while anyway, so. Yeah. And it actually cost us money for you guys to buy things, so. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, it does. Most sometimes of the time. you make like a dollar. Sometimes. Uh, but most of the time it costs us like a buck or two to actually fulfill an order, which is fine. We don't mind doing that. But um, if we're not getting orders, it's just really not worth it. Right. So um, if you guys want to order anything, go ahead and that'll probably be shut down the next couple weeks. I'd say so. Yeah. I'll give it. I don't know. We haven't decided yet. I'd probably give it mm, mid-July maybe. What do you think? I don't know. What's the date today? Today's the 14th. It's mid-June, but this episode's not going to come out until the 21st. So I'll give it, yeah, we'll give it to like mid-July. Yeah. Yeah, that works. I'll say. We'll give it to the middle of July. So if there's anything on you there you'll want, you want a cup, you want a shirt, you want a sweatshirt, any of that stuff, go ahead. Order it up before it's gone forever. I mean, we might still do merch again, like later. Just like do like drops. We'll see. We'll see what we um, decide. See what, what the future holds for us. But uh, yeah. Um, other than that, there's not really much going on. Nope. So go to Patreon, sign it up if you can't get enough of us. We haven't gotten any bad reviews lately, so that's nice. Just been living our lives. Living our lives. Podcasting away. So tell us how much you love us. Leave us some rating and reviews. Yep. Follow us. Head on over to Apple Podcast. Head on over to Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, TikTok. All those things. Give us a like, give us a follow, give us a subscribe. Whatever you got to do to show us some love. And with that being said, you want to jump in this case? Sounds good to me. Um, I got to be honest here. It's a little bit of an Ashley case. Oh, yeah? It made me want to vomit. Well, then why'd you do it? It was interesting. Okay. See? So, have you ever heard of Floribama? Say that again. Floribama. Like Florida and Alabama? It's the Florida-Alabama border. Apparently, it's riddled with crime. They call oh, it Floribama. I didn't know that. So, there's a show called Floribama Murders. Oh. So, I came across this case. It did not cross on the Florida-Alabama line. I don't know. I said line. The Florida-Alabama line. I don't know why it was featured on Florida-Alabama murders. That's weird. But whatever. We're going to jump into it. Is it uh, in one of those states? It's in Florida. But it's not on the border at all. It's like Mm. on the coast over by Mm. Orlando. You know how much I feel. You know how strongly (laughs) I feel about Orlando. Yeah. So, I mean, if you know the geography of Florida, Orlando is nowhere near the Florida-Alabama border. No, not really. No, not even a little bit, but whatever. It's fine. We're going to jump on in. Okay. So, uh, Deltona, Florida. You heard that right. Deltona. I've been there. Have you? I have. Okay. That's weird. Why have you been to Deltona? Because we used to stop there. That was our midway point to the Keys. 
Uh, okay. When you guys went to the Keys without me, got it. Okay, we're not going to harp on that. Um, Deltona, Florida. It's a city within Volusia County. Uh, Deltona is a suburb of Orlando. They have a population of roughly 95,000, making Deltona one of the largest cities in Central Florida. Hmm, I didn't know that. Mm-hmm. Deltona is mostly residential. It is a middle-class community that functions mostly as a commuter area, as most residents go into either Orlando or Daytona Beach for work. Right. Uh, according to Detective Joe Riley of the Volusia County Sheriff's Department, there is plenty of crime in Deltona to keep them busy. Everything from home and car burglaries to missing persons reports. I did my own little research on Deltona. Okay. Um, and according to NeighborhoodScout.com, Deltona has a crime rate of 12 per 1,000 residents. Hmm. It's not very high crime. No, I didn't. I don't remember it being dangerous. It's. I, I don't think it is. That's what I'm saying. So dramatized for the TV. I think it was dramatized for television because okay. they were like, oh, middle class. There's also this lady on there and she was like, they had some houses. They had some businesses. No shit. Like, what else makes up a city? Come on. Right. But um. anyway, no, I think it was a little dramatized because when I looked into it, they have a crime rate of 12 per 1,000 residents. That's a pretty average crime rate based on the size of Deltona. Uh, so just for comparison, Orlando has a rate of 44 per 1,000. I believe that. Significantly more. Uh, Daytona Beach has a rate of 39 per 1,000. I believe that as well. Miami, Florida has a rate of 35 per 1,000. I thought it would be higher. Uh... Mooresville, North Carolina, has a rate of 22 per 1,000. So Mooresville, North Carolina, has more crime than Deltona. Okay. Right, interesting. Uh, Chicago, 33 per 1,000. San Francisco, 54 per 1,000. And good old Salisbury, North Carolina, where I live, is 46 per 1,000. I don't think you should tell everybody where you live. They know where you live. Hmm. We've said it multiple times before. Okay. They know you live in Mooresville, North Carolina, and I live in Salisbury, North Carolina. And also we have a P.O. Box in Trenton Grove, North Carolina. That's true. I'm just being totally honest here. If somebody wanted to find me, they could do a quick Google search of my name. I'd pop right up. Okay. Finding people online is not that difficult. So. Yeah, but we shouldn't make it easier, in my opinion. Okay. Well, too late. I've done it multiple times. We've talked about it numerous times. Okay. Uh, it doesn't matter, though. Anyway. Now you got me all messed up. I'm sorry. It's fine. Okay. But anyway, all of that to say, Deltona seems like a decent area, despite what the... Volusia County Sheriff's Department apparently being kept busy. I feel like they're kept busy like the Morrisville Police Department's kept busy. Doing nonsense. Like when that traffic light was out and all oh, we were too busy to get there. And we <laughs> <Yeah>. almost died. <laughs> yeah, they were so busy. But I'm like, what are you doing? Because it's not high crime. Morrisville's not high crime. No. I would not say. But it's higher crime than Deltona. Yeah, 22. 22 out of 12. Down. So, I don't know. They were too busy though. There's a traffic light out. And actually, now we're going to die. It was like a traffic light out on a four-lane highway. <laughs> and they were too busy to come direct traffic. Yeah. They were also too busy to scout the stretch of road to see if any other lights were out. They wanted me to call back to tell them if any of the other <laughs> lights were out. Like, they couldn't send someone down the road to see what lights were out. No, why would they? It'd be easier for you to. Yeah. So, anyway, that brings us to April 4th of 2013. Jimmy Schaefer, a 36-year-old limo driver in Central Florida, was reported missing by his father, who resided in Pennsylvania. His father reported him missing after not hearing from him for a few days. He could just feel something was wrong. They had a close relationship and spoke often, and it wasn't like Jimmy to go this long without contacting his father. Patrol headed out to Jimmy's address where they find Jimmy's girlfriend, Candy Medina. Uh, she said that she also felt like something was wrong. She didn't report him missing, which to me is kind of weird, but that okay. kind of weird. Um, at this point, she had not heard from Jimmy for 48 hours. Hmm. To me, that's kind of weird. If I heard from my husband in like an hour, I'm concerned about his location. It wasn't location. her husband though, right? It was her boyfriend? It was her boyfriend. How long had they been dating? Uh, they'd been together long enough to have three children together, one of which was 16. Oh, okay. Okay. So, Recanted? Yep. Continue. Yes. <laughs> I'll say that later on. But yes, they've been together long enough that she should know his habits. Um, if my husband is not responding to me for literally like an hour, I get concerned. Yeah. If you're not responding to me for like an hour, I'm concerned. If anybody in my life doesn't respond to me for about an hour, I'm concerned. So right. to go 48 hours without hearing from him, to me, that's a red flag. Yeah, that's kind of a lot. So as if this isn't alarming enough, when police speak to Tyler Schaefer, which is Jimmy and Candy's 16-year-old son, they learn that Jimmy sent Tyler strange texts that very morning. Uh, essentially, they say, I fucked up. Don't call me. I need to lay low. Don't call the police. I owe people money. I need to stay hidden. So he's sending all this to his 16-year-old son, which to me, also kind of weird. I don't right. feel like you should be involving your 16-year-old son in your adult problems. No. 
Um, but maybe that's just how they were. That's whatever. I mean, not my place to judge. Um, but Candy says that this just doesn't really sit right with her. Um, she can't think of a single thing that Jimmy would do, um, or get wrapped up in that would result in him leaving his family. Right. So Candy and Jimmy at this point have been together for at least 17 years. I couldn't figure out exactly how long they've been together, but they have a 16 year old together. She would have been pregnant for, you know, almost a year. 10 months. I mean, a full pregnancy is almost 10 months. They say nine, but it's really almost 10. It's 40 weeks. Um, so they would have been together for, I mean, at least 17 years, I would say. Right. If not longer. They had three children together. They had moved together from Pennsylvania where they had met to North Carolina and then to Florida. I mean, like they'd been through some, through some shit together. Right. You know? Candy is obviously worried about Jimmy, but she's also concerned about how she's going to provide for her and Jimmy's three kids without his limo salary. I don't blame her for that. If something were to happen to my husband, I don't know what I would do. Honestly, I mean, I would obviously be concerned for, like, his safety. But I think I also immediately would go to, like, holy shit, how am I going to provide for these kids? Right. So, to me, didn't really raise a red flag that she was, like, concerned right. about him. But then also, like, oh, no, we're going to lose everything. Uh, she said, like, her landlord was the kind of guy who he didn't really care what was going on. If he didn't pay his rent, you were getting kicked out. So, she was like, you know, if we don't find Jimmy soon, like, I need to pay our rent. He has all of the money because he gets paid cash. And we're going to get evicted. Right. With the info that police get from Candy, they begin their investigation. Before they had to talk to Jimmy, I'm sorry, they didn't talk to Jimmy, he's missing. (laughs) Before they headed to talk to Jimmy's employer, police noticed that there's a neighbor across the street who's like sitting outside with two small children. And they figure, you know, what can it hurt to ask her if she's seen Jimmy? So they approached the woman whose name is Angela Stold. She says, yeah, I know Jimmy, but like not really. Like the, you know, I mean, she knows of him pretty much, but she doesn't really know him. Right. And she tells police, you know, I haven't seen him. So they move on. That's really the end of that. Uh, they had to Diamond Limousine, where Jimmy worked, for Pete Harrington. I thought that was funny, but it was an H-A, not an H-E. Okay. So Pete Harrington. The company is ran from Pete's home, and when police arrive, they immediately notice that Jimmy's red truck is parked outside. This is alarming not only to the police, but also to Pete. It wasn't like Jimmy to leave his truck at Pete's. Standard protocol was that Jimmy would come to Pete's, in his truck he'd pick up the limo he'd go do his shift and then he would return the limo very early the next morning um he'd take his truck and leave he would give pete the cash that he'd collected as well as a gps that he had like for the limo Mm -hmm. to use during his shift and i mean that was really it so it was weird that his truck was still there uh pete is very cooperative and he agrees to go in for questioning so pete claims that he last saw jimmy around 3 a.m on april 3rd when he finished his shift so that checks out with Candy's story. She last saw him uh, 48 hours prior. He was reported missing on April 4th. So she saw him April 2nd when he left for his shift. And he would work until the early morning. He'd get off work about 3 or 4 a.m. After driving people, you know, home from clubs, but not in a limo. So he says, last saw him, 3 a.m., April 3rd. He had finished his shift. He came to drop the limo off. He gave Pete $410 cash. And he said that Jimmy seemed to be in an uncommonly good mood that night. I had to actually rewind and play multiple times because I couldn't decide if he was saying that Pete was in a bad mood. I'm sorry, if Jimmy was in a bad mood or if he was in a good mood because he was very much using like oxymorons, like contradicting himself. But I decided it was a good mood. Okay. So Pete says the last person that would have actually seen Jimmy, though, was the on-site limo mechanic. His name was John uh, Brochu is how I've decided that that's pronounced. It's B-R-O-C-H-U. And I looked up like a pronunciation and it said... B-R-O-S-H-O-O is how you pronounce that. So, okay. Brochu. John Brochu. Um, Sounds good to me. Pete said that John was unpredictable and that he didn't particularly like Jimmy. And he had told Jimmy to just kind of stay away from him and to not cause any conflict. It was better just to kind of ignore him and go about your business. So, obviously, John is called in for questioning. John says, yeah, he saw Jimmy that night. He said he saw him get ready to leave, but then a black four-door sedan with very dark tinted windows pulled up And he heard someone yell, Jimmy, get in. And then he heard another voice say, Jimmy, get in the fucking car. And then speed off with no headlights on. So this would explain why Jimmy's truck is still there. But it doesn't really give police any indication of where Jimmy might be. Right. And who these men were. Well, he didn't say men. He just said two voices. Okay. He didn't say they were men. He said that he heard two different voices. Okay. So just keep that in mind. Sorry, I heard male. Yeah, no, it was just two different voices. He didn't specify which gender they were, but he just said that they were different voices. Okay. So maybe he knew they were different because it was one man, one female. He didn't say which gender they were, but he said there was definitely two different people. He said also there were two people because he saw Jimmy get in the front seat, but like he had heard another voice. So there was somebody in the back seat, that means. Right. 
John says he figured it was someone who Jimmy owed money to because Jimmy had a gambling problem and he owed a lot of people money, which checks out with the text that he sent to Tyler, their son, because he had told him, you know, I owe people money. Don't come find me. I'm in trouble. Uh, Police asked John if he and Jimmy ever had problems. And John's like, oh, yeah, hell yeah. I threatened to kill him last week. And so um, they're like, okay, well, tell us about that. Like, what happened there? So John's like, yeah, uh, Jimmy owed me money. Um, And so one evening, like, I was out working on a limo. Jimmy came home, and he thought it would be funny to spray me with a water hose. And I had a razor blade in my hand because I was scraping windows. And so I grabbed that razor blade, and I um, said, you know, Jimmy, you son of a bitch, I'm going to cut your throat out. Uh, so he said obviously he didn't do it though so you know it wasn't a big deal but he said there was no secret that jimmy hated his guts and he hated jimmy's guts at least he's honest i guess no he said he you know didn't do anything to him um he had heard rumors that jimmy had planned it and got out of town because of all of the money he owed people uh but he personally thinks he's probably dead so police ask just to make sure if he killed jimmy and john gets a little angry at this um and he says oh fuck no like i watched the interrogation and he got mad when they asked if he killed jimmy He says that after he saw Jimmy get into the black sedan, he went to bed. It's a little bit shaky, you know, of an alibi, but there's no evidence for them to hold him. So they have to let John Brochu go and just kind of, you know, keep him as a possible suspect. But they don't really have anything to hold him on. Right. So police begin canvassing the area with missing person flyers. They just want to see if they can, you know, drum up any uh, leads at all. They receive word that Jimmy might possibly be hiding in an apartment complex close by or another neighborhood. They follow up these leads, but they turn up with nothing. Uh, They follow his last limo route, you know, based off the GPS. They talk to everyone that they can to see if anyone has heard from Jimmy. But again, nothing. Um, They start checking homeless camps to see if maybe he's hiding out there. Nothing. Um, At this point, they really don't have anything to go off of, and it's been days. And with Jimmy missing, his family ends up getting evicted from their home. That's sad. Mm-hmm. Like, how quickly? I mean, at this point, it's only been a few days. Mm, that's pretty crazy. So I feel like maybe they were already behind. Yeah, maybe. Or I don't know what Florida's eviction laws are. Yeah, that's But I true. mean, at this point, it's only been five days, maybe. Yeah, like North Carolina's eviction laws, like, takes a while to yeah, kick people out. Not really. It's like 10 days. Okay, to start, but not to kick you out. Yeah, it's 10 days. Well, then how do people squat for so long? Because they go to court and um, go before the judge. Like, I mean, if you try to fight it, you can make it longer, but no, it's about 10 days. Hmm. Okay. Once your rent's not paid by t- day 10, they can file a, like, writ of possession to, like, take back over the property, and it's only maybe 15 days total. They give you, like, five days back of all your stuff and leave hmm. before your court date. And then, like, if you actually go to court, then you can try to fight it, but... I guess it just kind of depends. You have to still pay something. Like, you can't not pay anything when you leave the court. At that point, like, your rental payments go through the court. Um, I was trying to see, like, the date, though. What was the date I said? It was April 4th, so I think they're probably already late. Yeah. At that point. Like, that would check out for me. Yeah. Like, maybe, you know, most places give you until the 5th with right. no penalty. So, I don't know. Regardless, though, um, they get evicted. And uh, I lost my spot because I rolled, scrolled up to see... Here we go. Okay. So they get evicted from their home. Candy moves her and her children in with her mother. And she just kind of tries to, you know, get by the best she can with, I mean, essentially, I know they were just dating, but like they've been together for 17 years. Right. So that's longer than I've been married to my husband. Yeah. They were life partners at that point. Yeah. Common law at that point. I mean, it depends on the state because some states don't recognize that. But to me, they were together. Like there wasn't any basically married at that point yes i agree um so after a week police finally receive um jimmy's cell phone records okay um and his phone is actually active and it's pinging off of a cell phone tower in sanford florida which is not too far from deltona right uh police start dialing jimmy's contacts to see if they can you know like get any leads but again come up with nothing they do however discover one interesting piece of evidence while they're coming through his phone since he's vanished, Jimmy has been staying in contact with one Angelo Stolt. You know, his neighbor, who said she didn't really know him. Right. Uh, police immediately head to Angela's, where she admits that she had been helping Jimmy manage his finances. No. It's kind of weird, because she probably shouldn't know him. But. Right. So, maybe she just forgot. Maybe. I don't know, though. It's kind of weird, because Jimmy didn't have a bank account. Hmm. So, Angela 
actually allowed him to deposit his social security directly into her bank account. But she didn't know him. But she didn't know him. Hmm, that's sketchy. So he would get cash from his limo drop from like his limo driver job. Mm-hmm. And he would give that money to Candy to pay bills and to like provide for his family. But then he also received this social security money, which went into this account that um Angela had. And then she would give him cash in increments as needed. So obviously this is weird for police. Uh, because she lied about even knowing him and then also like how well do they know each other if jimmy's trusting her and like depositing his checks direct deposit into her bank accounts yeah it seems like they had to know each other a little more than uh, angela was leading on right more than acquaintances yeah so another thing that's kind of weird is that angela's number is saved in jimmy's phone as neighbor that's not suspicious at all so when police ask her why she says that candy would not like jimmy having her number in his phone why but why right uh so police ask her if she has any idea where jimmy could be but she insists that she has no idea uh they ask her if there's any sort of a romantic relationship with jimmy but she denies it says they're completely platonic uh they do however find a text from jimmy to angela just days before where he asked her if he left his shorts at her house but they're just friends. Right. So it's kind of weird he took his shorts off. They barely know each other. Kind of weird he took his shorts off at her house. Yeah, maybe. And left them there. So I don't know. To me, it seems like they may have been a little romantic. Maybe. Um, but whatever. Police are like, okay, cool. Can we search your house? And Angela's like, yeah, no problem. Come on in, guys. Uh, so they do not find Jimmy. They do, however, find an absolutely repulsive home. They said the smell of trash. The smell of trash was pungent. Uh, there's something unidentifiable, like splattered down the wall that at first they thought was blood spatter. Uh, but Angela's like, no, nah, no, it's just barbecue sauce. Like that time I came into your house and there was a chocolate <laughs> handprint on the wall <laughs> and I thought you were murdered? Yes. That was for my children though. Okay. I cleaned it up. <laughs> I know you did. It's not there anymore. Yes, Ashley was freaking out because she came into my house. My front door was unlocked, which never happens because I don't leave my front door unlocked. Um, and there was, it was dark. There were no lights dark. on. There were no lights on. It was like, I don't know, nine in the morning. And I there was, was later than that. I think it was like 1030. I don't know what time it was. I was awake. I mean, I was in my bed awake. I had unlocked the door for you. Okay. Yeah, that's true. So I was like laying in my bed watching my computer and I put like my AirPods in, you know, so like you couldn't hear the TV, but I was like watching TV in my bed. Right. And Ashley like, came in looking like white as a ghost terrified. She was like, oh my God, I thought you guys were murdered because I came <laughs> in, front door was unlocked house was dark it's 10 30 in the morning and there's like unidentifiable blood smeared on your wall but it was actually chocolate pudding from one of the kids yeah so like that but this was in fact not blood it was they don't they didn't specify they just said that upon a closer look it was not consistent with blood it was probably a condiment of some kind so probably she, barbecue said, it sauce. Barbecue sauce. she said it was barbecue sauce it was probably barbecue sauce uh angela said you know she was in the process of cleaning up but police said that there was trash in the home and it had been accumulating for months. Like, we're not talking about, like, just a little bit of a mess. Like, this was, like, months and months of unkept, like, trash. Right. Um, in her bedroom, she had no bedding on her bed. It was just really not a great living situation. Uh, there's no sign of Jimmy, though. So police are like, okay, cool, let's get ready to leave. But before they do, Angela admits that Jimmy had been to her house since he'd been reported missing. Mm, interesting. Yeah, this really pisses the police off. Uh, detectives on the scene tell her that if Jimmy winds up dead, they're going to show up with handcuffs. And to this, she slams the door in their face. Stand up girl. So obviously they're angry with Angela, but they don't have any evidence that she's done anything to Jimmy. I just personally feel like at that point, they 100% could have arrested her. Yeah. For like, I mean, not a fugitive, but like harboring. I would say for interfering with police investigation. Yeah. Like she knew Jimmy was missing. And then she's like, yeah, he came to my house. I didn't report it. Like, I feel like at that point, you're... Right, you're interfering. Interfering and you're breaking the law. But they didn't. They let it go. Uh, So regardless, they continued their investigation. And on April 20th, 2003. Is that right? Was it 2003? That's not right. 2013. (laughs) I was like, that's not right. They moved to Florida in 2017. Or 2007. Uh, So regardless, they continued their investigation. And on April 20th, 2013, Angela's sister calls 911 frantically because Angela is threatening to kill herself. She has pills. She's threatening to take. And has apparently admitted to a crime. With this information, police are able to initiate the Baker's Act, which is an involuntary counseling for suicidal individuals. I think it's essentially like an involuntarily psych hold. Right, like 72 hours? Yeah, it's 72 hours. But I think that they just kind of try to make it sound better by saying it's a counseling. 
Right. But to me, it seems like it's a cycled. So Angela's taken into custody and she's transported into a facility for people being held due to the Baker's Act. And I said here, it's a 72 hour hold. While being held, Angela decides that she's ready to talk to detectives. So that night, about 3 a.m., detective gets a call. He goes out there to talk to her. And at that point, she's like, no, never mind. I'm like revoking that. I don't want to speak. Like whatever. She's pulling the Fifth Amendment. She doesn't want to talk. Okay. Um, he's like, okay, we'll sleep on it. Let me know tomorrow what you think. So she sleeps on it. The next morning, she's like, okay, I'm ready to talk. So they call the detective back out. He comes and she says, um, essentially what happened is it was just an April Fool's joke gone bad. Kind of weird because, like, it's April 3rd. It wasn't April 1st. I feel like April Fool's jokes are only good on the 1st of April. Right. That's the only day it's acceptable. Yeah. And even then, like, missing person, that's not really an April Fool's joke. Well, I feel like anything that resolves in, like, yeah, a person going missing isn't funny. No. Um, But also, like, if it would have been April 1st, it would have been more acceptable. It's not funny, haha. It's funny, weird. <laughs> yes. Yes. Exactly. But it's more weird that it was April 3rd, not April 1st. But yeah. whatever. She says it was an April Fool's joke gone bad. It's not the first time we've heard that, though. We heard that in another case, didn't we? Where it was just like a joke. Um, yeah, the girl and her friends, Kelly. Yeah, yeah in the woods, Kelly Wollwinkle. Yeah. Yeah. But it wasn't an April Fool's joke. It was just No, it was a, just like a normal everyday joke. It was a joke. prank. It was just a prank, yeah. Um, so anyway, that's what she says. Uh, and to please, this like doesn't make sense. So like, please elaborate. Like, what do you mean? So she does go a little deeper into her story. Essentially, she says that she and Jimmy were just platonic friends and she was helping him with his gambling problem, like she said. He was putting his social security money into an account that she has. It's her account. um, And she would help him to not like blow through it all with, you know, his gambling. Uh, But then it got to a point where he started to overdraw the account, which made her angry because it was her account, which makes sense. I'd be pissed off too if someone was overdrawing my bank account. Yeah. So it seems like maybe he had access to it. Like, maybe he had the debit card. I don't really know. But he was overdrawing it. That made her mad. I mean, understandable. Uh, she says that Jimmy was trying to borrow money from her dad. Which, to me, is also weird. I don't really run around to my platonic friends. I'm like, hey, let me borrow money from your dad. Right. Like, that's kind of weird to me. Unless maybe they were more than just friends. Right. I really try to borrow money from no one but my own dad. I mean, I just think it's kind of weird, like, if they're just friends. But, like, maybe if they were romantically involved, it wouldn't be as weird. Yeah, maybe. You know? I don't know. Uh, but whatever she says that uh, so she wanted to get back at him for lying to her and for constantly overdrawing her account so she hatched a plan so on April 3rd she texted Jimmy and she told him that she was going to pick him up and she was going to get him that money from her dad her dad was going to give him the money so that's why he was in an exceptionally good mood oh makes sense he was getting a couple thousand dollars from Angela's dad so she went to Pete's with her two older children her 16-year-old daughter and her 17-year-old daughter. So that explains... I'm sorry. Her 16-year-old daughter and her 17-year-old son. Okay. So that explains why um, John had heard multiple voices. Because one was the son or daughter, whatever, and the other one was her. So they got Jimmy and they took him back to their house. Uh, her kids went to bed, which also was kind of weird to me too. Because she had two younger kids and then she had two older kids. Who was watching the younger kids while she was off getting Jimmy? So she took the older kids with her. I don't know. Just thought of that, but... No one. They were probably in bed and she left them home. Yeah, probably. So her older kids went to bed and she made a couple of mixed drinks for her and Jimmy to enjoy. Also, I don't know, just kind of weird. The whole thing to me is kind of weird. I don't think there's a problem with having friends of the opposite sex. But when you have to go behind your spouse's back... Yeah. That's an issue to me. And then also, like, I don't know that you should be hanging out with your opposite sex friends at three in the morning drinking. So, to me, I just don't really feel like this is a friendship. I feel like it's more of a an affair. Yeah, I mean, maybe. So, anyway, she makes them some mixed drinks. Um, it was a mix of vodka, peach schnapps, and Flexeril. What is that? Flexeril is a muscle relaxer. That's what I thought. So, it shouldn't really be taken with alcohol. Uh, but she claims they're both drinking it, and she was pretty nonchalant about it. Like, it was something they did all the time normally. So, police were like, why did you, why did you do that? And she was like, oh, it just kind of heightens the the buzz it just makes us drunk quicker so okay whatever it's kind of weird but all right i mean it is but they kind of seem like maybe a little trashy like that might be a little trashy thing people do (laughs) no it's very judgmental yeah i mean i wasn't trying to be judgmental i mean i just kind of seem like it was a trashy thing that people do i just think it seems like something that trashy people would do i don't know i've never heard of anyone doing that i feel like it's equivalent to uh like lean i don't know what lean is 
Yes, you do. It's like cough syrup and liquor like mixed together. Oh, yeah. You did that when you're like 16. Yeah. But not always. There were some people when we worked at Duck Horse that got fired for doing it in the bathroom. They were grown-ass adults. Oh, yeah. That's true. So I feel like it's just kind of like, I mean, a trashy thing to do. I mean, okay. I've never in my normal life thought like, how? Let me mix these hard drugs with some alcohol. Like, I don't I just feel like that's very much like a... Yeah. Okay. A trashy thing to do. I mean, sorry if that sounded judgmental. I'm sorry if you mix flex oil with your vodka. <laughs> All the way to you. I do that every day. So. To me, it just seemed a little strange. So, seemed a little trashy. Um, so, anyway, she says they're drinking their drinks. And she says that Jimmy starts to ask her about the loan that her dad's going to give him. And Angela's like, oh, yeah, yeah, let's go. Let's go get the money. So, she gets Jimmy and she drives him to a local cemetery. And Jimmy's like, what are we doing at the cemetery? And Angela's like, oh, we got like 20 minutes before my dad wakes up. I just thought maybe we could like chill and talk, whatever. And he's like, oh, okay, cool. In the cemetery? Yeah. Okay, that's normal. Yep. So she says, you know, as time's going on, she opens up to Jimmy and she says, you know, my dad's not going to give you that money and um, I'm not giving you any more money and better yet, I'm going to shut down that bank account that you use to get your social security checks. And then she says to him, you know, how does it feel to be lied to? And Jimmy loses his shit and that's where everything goes south. Okay. She says that Jimmy said, fuck you, fuck you, fuck you, you bitch. I'm going to fucking kill you and came at her. It's not funny. <laughs> it's not funny. No, it's not, but it is kind of funny. She was very adamant that he said it. Fuck you, okay. fuck you, fuck you, bitch. I'm going to fucking kill you. Okay. Uh, so she grabbed the first thing that she could get her hands on, which was an ice pick. She stabbed him in the eye. Why did she have an ice pick? It's Florida. I think that's a standard thing you keep in your car in I don't think so, because I don't know if you know this, but Florida's hot. That's what the police said when she mm-hmm. said she grabbed the first thing she could find, which was an ice pick. Oh, okay. So she stabs him in the eye. But Jimmy's still fighting her. So she grabs some rope that she just happened to have in her car because her kids use it for climbing trees. Okay. And uh, somehow, with this grown-ass man fighting her, she's able to wrap the rope around his neck and choke him. Hmm. Uh, So once he stops fighting, she wants to ensure that he's dead. So she pulls that ice pick out and stabs him in the other eye. He didn't do anything, so she's like, okay, cool, he's dead. Uh, She then saran wraps his head to the headrest. What the fuck? Because she doesn't want it to flop around while she's driving. So she also just had saran wrap in her car. Why wouldn't she just put him in the back seat? Why would she have saran wrap in her car? That's I mean, that's super weird, super but... Super weird to me. That she had I saran think wrap saran wrap would be more likely than a nice pick. I don't know. Oh. Seems more likely than a nice pick. I don't feel like pick. any of those items should have been in her car. I mean, I could see maybe the rope. My kids climb trees all the time. They've never used a rope to do so. Okay, well, not for that, but... I carry around rope in my car for like six months. That's because you don't clean your car out. Right. Okay. She, clearly, she probably doesn't either. I mean, her house is dirty. Okay. So her well, car's probably whatever. dirty too. Whatever. Okay. I'll go with it. Uh, but that's what she did. She just ran around his head to the headrest so that it wouldn't flop around while she was driving. Okay. <laughs> she goes home and she parks in the garage. Uh, so by this point, I mean, it had to have been early morning. Because like she picked him up around 3 a.m., they went home, had some drinks. Like by this point, it's early morning. Right. And she had said, like, oh, my dad won't be up for like 15, 20 minutes. So to me, that timeline. I'd say like 6 a.m. Yeah. And uh, her kids are awake. So she tells her children, though, don't go in the garage. I hit a deer. And so her kids listen to that. Uh, she goes outside and she gets her smaller children's kiddie pool. And she puts it in the garage. And then she uses her feet to push Jimmy's body out the passenger door, out of the passenger door into the kiddie pool. And then she goes inside to watch TV for a while. Well, he's just chilling in the pool. Mm-hmm. Okay. Oh, he's dead. So it's not like he's going anywhere. And even if he was going somewhere, she stabbed him in the eye with an ice pick. Both eyes. So he can't see. Uh, like, yeah, if he wasn't dead. Um, but she needed to get some rest before disposing of the body. So she takes a nap. How long night she's had? Uh, so when she wakes up, she figures if she can make his body easier to transport, then she can get rid of it. So she dismembers Jimmy's body. This is where it becomes an Ashley case. <laughs> so she dismembers I Jimmy's body. I don't do very many dismemberments. So I also would like to make it known that I didn't know that this all was going to transpire when I picked the case. Okay, but I didn't know this, too far in. I didn't know this was going down until I was too far in. So she dismembers Jimmy's body. Uh, and police are really disturbed by like how nonchalantly she's telling them all this. Like it's just no big deal. She's like, yeah, so I had to make them easier to transport. So I started cutting them up. And they're like, well, where'd you start? And she's like, I don't know. I just started going. Cutting them up with a saw. And they're like, okay. But it gets much worse than that. Because Angela says that her next step was she wanted to attempt to cremate him. So by doing this, she cooked him on the stove. What the fuck? In a pot. How is that going to cremate him? It's going to make him jelly. So they said, 
Why would you say that? <laughs> Why would you say that? I mean, it's not going to get rid of his bones, though. No. No, it didn't. And they said, like, the police were like, how big is your pot? That you were going to, like, a leg's a pretty big thing to get rid of. And she's like, oh, no, no. The larger limbs I put in the oven. I cooked those in the oven, and I cooked the smaller things in a pot on the stove. Yeah, no big deal. I do that, too. Um, Fucking weird. Yeah. But probably the most disturbing part to police is that she says to them, you know, um, that first day that you talked to me, I was actually really surprised that you didn't smell him. Because if you had just gotten a little closer to my house, you would have smelled me cooking him, essentially. And that it was like the worst thing that she's ever smelled. So this really pisses the police off because they're like, are you kidding me? Like we were this close to this lady and like we didn't right. think anything of it. And like one of the detectives was like, I'm shocked I didn't smell it. Like, Right. And if she wouldn't have confessed, they probably would have never found her. No. So she says she then took what was left of him and all of the evidence and she put it into trash bags. And with the help of her older children, she scattered the remains in trash bags all over the county in different, uh, like, dumpsters. What a piece of crap. Made her kids yeah. help her. Yeah. So police ask Angela if she can show them where she disposed of the body. And she's like, yeah, absolutely. So they drive around and she points out all the dumpsters that she put parts of his body in. But, I mean, at this point, it had been almost three weeks. Right. So, so like, those dumpsters they're gone. gone. There's nothing there. And she's like, oh, no, but there's one more place that we can check. And that is a wooded area where she disposed of some of the stuff from her car. So she drives them over there. And when they arrive, police immediately find the carpet from her trunk that she's ripped out, as well as remains of that kiddie pool that she used. So they're like, okay, this is starting to, you know, add up to her story. Uh, But they still don't have any body. Uh, But then Angela's like, oh, no, wait, wait, there's more. Let's go to the cemetery. And so she takes them over to the cemetery. And she's like, yep, this right here, this is where it happened. And there's some trash bags there. And these trash bags have been ripped open by some animals. And uh, Jimmy's body parts are scattered in this area of the cemetery, out of the bags. Uh, There's a large pot, which lines up with her, you know, boiling him on the stove. Um, There is a comforter and sheet set. Remember, her bed didn't have anything on it. Right. More than likely because it was part of the crime scene. Right. Um, And while there's no ice pick, there is packaging for an ice pick that was purchased at Walmart. It was like a mainstay ice pick. Hmm. So, uh, police then takes police to, what did I say, police? Yeah, police take police. <laughs> Angela then takes police to a local park. A local park, a local park is what I meant. <laughs> Get it out. Angela then takes police to a local. <laughs> Just breathe a minute. Angela then takes police to a local park where she and just, <laughs> just close the computer shut down. What the fuck is wrong with me? <laughs> it's not funny. You get really frustrated. Something's wrong with me. I'm having like a serious issue with my brain. Okay. <clears throat> last, last take. Ready? Angela then takes police to a local park where she instructs them to dig about eight inches below a doggy poop bag dispensing station. And there they find Jimmy Schaefer's ID and wallet. She has one more stop, another park, where she tells police that she's buried Jimmy's cell phone. Uh, This is weird to police because that's nowhere near where it's been pinging, remember? Right. But Angela's like, oh yeah, I can explain that. Um, See, what would happen is I would take his cell phone and drive to Sanford and text people, and I would take the battery out and go home. So she's the one that's been texting people for weeks Mm -hmm. with his cell phone. Yeah, so she was texting Tyler, Jimmy's son, uh, Candy, his girlfriend, telling him, don't look for no, don't look for me, whatever, I'm in trouble, uh, don't get the police involved. And she was also texting herself, saying, um, I'm on the run, just keep the money, essentially like covering her tracks because she was still collecting his social security money. Right. So with the evidence, they're able to arrest Angela Stolt and charge her with second degree murder. Luckily, Angela's children were not charged as they thought that they were helping their mother dispose of a dead deer that she had hit. They were unaware it was a body. Oh. So. Okay, but at 17, I feel like you should know, like, oh, we're going to go scatter a deer around the city. They should have known better than that. I mean, possibly, but... And I'm not saying they're at fault. It's totally Angela. She's totally at fault. No, I think that it's 100% she's at fault. Um, And maybe they should have known better, yes. But, I mean, police are pretty confident that they didn't know better. I mean, it was black trash bags. Like, they're pretty confident that they thought that they were helping their mother, like, dispose of a dead deer. Okay, well. So, they aren't charged. 
the autopsy was not able to determine an exact cause of death because most of the body had been completely mutilated at this point. Right. Uh, they are able, they are, however, able to match Jimmy's family's DNA to the remains. So they are for sure that it's Jimmy's remains. Uh, the charges are escalated to first degree murder, given the brutality, as well as the kill kit that Angela had in her car. You know, the saran wrap, the pick, I- the p- pick ice, the ice pick, <laughs> the rope. Right. So her trial begins on December 1st of 2014. Angela's defense tried to claim self-defense, but that was quickly thrown out the window when the prosecution brought evidence that Angela had bought rubber gloves, plastic wrap, and saw blades an hour before picking Jimmy up. Hmm. So she had this plant. It was not a joke. No, it was not a joke. Uh, they believe her motive was greed because as long as they thought Jimmy was alive, then she would keep getting social security checks. Okay, but social security checks are not that much. It's about a thousand dollars a month. So that's not that much. I agree. But she thought it was enough to kill Jimmy over. Hmm. Um, and then on December 5th, 2014, Angela was sentenced to life in prison. So that's the end of that. Hmm. So this is my thought. I'm just gonna this is completely thought. There's no fact to back this. I don't know that I believe her story. Okay. Because why would she have to get rid of the bedding? Right. Like the bedding had nothing to do with any of that. So to me, it kind of seems like maybe it was more of a lover's quarrel. Right. Not so much money. I mean maybe the money was involved too, but like to me it just seems like there had to have been more in it because like why else would she get rid of her bedding? There's absolutely no reason. Unless she like wrapped his body up in her bedding or something. But why? She already had him in a kiddie pool in the garage, dismembering him. I don't know. Like, how does the bed come into play? To me, it just kind of seems like something had to go down in that bed. Maybe because, like, they were lovers. So there was, you know, love juices on the bed. I mean, maybe, I guess. And, like, she was going with that they were just friends. Maybe. Or they didn't know each other or whatever she said. I mean, maybe. I don't know. To me, that's just weird, though. She could have just washed it, though. Does that not get rid of it? I don't know. Me either. I don't pay attention to that. Lover's juices. I don't know. <laughs> um, I don't know. But to me, I just feel like the bed had something to do with it. Yeah. I don't see any reason why she would get rid of it otherwise. Yeah. The whole story is kind of weird. Mm-hmm. Well, what I've learned from this is I should not leave rope in my car. No. You 100% shouldn't leave rope in your car. It's I already kill kit. that, but... It's a kill kit, ma'am. I did have that in my car for like six months after I went tubing. Yeah, okay, but... I feel like that can be explained better. Like, going tubing and having a rope in your car makes more sense to me than being like, oh, yeah, my kids use this rope to climb trees. Like, those right. are really shitty. Yeah. Alibi. Like, if you're going to have a rope in your car, you need to have a better reason. Right. I feel like if you said, like, oh, yeah, I just left that in my car. We went tubing six months ago. And, like, you have proof that you went tubing. That's completely different than being like, oh, yeah, my kids use that to climb trees. Right. Yeah, that's weird. Stupid to me. So, I don't know. But, yeah, that was very much an Ashley case, in my opinion. Yeah, it was pretty gross. Mm-hmm. Pretty disgusting. Dismemberment, cooking people. First of all, disgusting. I haven't done very many dismemberment cases. That's not true. It is You've true. done more than me. Well, I may have done more than you, but I still haven't done very many. I don't agree. We got people being fed to pigs. We got people That's cooking not being them. Dismembered. I feel like you've done multiple cases where they've, like, cooked them. Well, yeah, because, like, and that's crazy to, to me that they ate people. Yeah. And I feel like in order to cook them, you have to dismember them. So, yeah. Okay. I think you do more dismemberment than you think. I think I've done, like, three. Well, this is the first time. (laughs) Picton. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. That guy in, like, Japan or whatever. Right. That sell the beef jerky. Mm Mm-hmm. And then... And Joe, the cannibal. Yeah. That's it. Three. Three too many. (laughs) Okay, whatever. So, when I was reading this, or I was doing this, I was like, yep, Ashley's gonna love it. I didn't love it. It's disgusting. It was quite disgusting. Now you know how I feel. Thank you. Thank you for that. So that being said, um, it's really the end. There ain't no more. All right. Well, peace out, Girl Scouts. Catch us next week. Bye. Bye. Hey, everyone. Thanks for listening. If you liked what you heard and want to support a small podcast, please give us money at www.patreon.com forward slash weekly dose of wicked where you can join one of our three tiers at the five dollar level we've got the moderately wicked for seven dollars a month we've got the awesomely wicked and for all of those high rollers big ballers out there we got the ten dollar level the extraordinarily wicked as a member of our patreon you are entitled to bonus episodes 
Uh, you also get a one-time shout out on our podcast, as well as some other cool little extra things going on there. So come on over, join our fan club. Feel free to give us a follow on Instagram at weekly underscore dose underscore of underscore wicked, or you can literally just search weekly dose of wicked and we'll pop up because we're the only ones. For a direct feed of our podcast, please go to www.weeklydoseofwicked.buzzsprout.com. Great news. You can now listen to us pretty much wherever you like to listen to podcasts. That's right, folks. We are big time. You can now hear your weekly dose of Wicked on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts, Amazon Music, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, TuneIn Plus Alexa, Podcast Addict, Podchaser, Pocket Cast, Deezer, Listen Notes, Player FM, Podcast Index, Overcast, Castro, Castbox, and Podfriend. The only place we can't seem to get ourselves on is Pandora. So we'll let you know when that happens. In the meantime, make sure to come back next Wednesday for your weekly, weekly dose, dose of, of wicked. wicked. But um. Psh.